Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and just put it to the put it to the put it to the screen, put it on a record. As an educator, I am highly disappointed with the people that are responsible for us. And the reason why is bottom line, we as teachers take bullets we're not supposed to. Now, I get it. There are a lot of sacrifices that teachers have to make in order to do the greater good for our students, for our organization, for our own very livelihoods. But I don't recall compromising our integrity part of the job description. So where where do we get off on believing that teachers have to be the scapegoats for everything? This this past week at work, these past two weeks at work have really showed me that at the end of the day, it's really, it's me, myself, and I. Like, I don't, I don't trust a soul that is, that is not currently teaching students during COVID. I don't trust the soul to understand the depth, the full gravity as to why we teachers literally are on the precipice of a mass desertion. But for those of y'all that are, you know, for those of y'all that are not of the elite, I will go ahead and break this down for you. Now, this is strictly from my own personal experience. If you are a... If you are a person that understands this, if you are a person who co-signs this, if you are a person who's experiencing this, or you are married to somebody, or you're dating somebody who's experiencing this, you feel free to say amen in the comments. I will happily allow you to do so. And you can even share your own stories. We want to make sure that everybody has a chance and opportunity to be able to speak their piece. So <clears throat> the first thing I kind of wanted to, first thing I kind of want to talk about is the fact that when we deal with students, Now, granted, we teach our students to be better than what they were when they first came to us. Now, the things that they do, we can't totally blame them. Like 70 percent of the things that they do, we can't really blame them for. The 30 percent is what we teach them. Now, the 70 percent comes from the next group of people that we're going to be dealing with, with their parents. The parents are the main crux of what main crux of how we deal with this. Why are we taking bullets for parents' irresponsibility? Why? Why are we taking bullets for a parent who can't seem to get their child to stop smoking weed and playing Call of Duty all night to go to sleep so they can get good, healthy rest and be up in the morning for their classes? Like, you don't even have to put them on the bus. Get them up, bring them to the kitchen table, and... Make them do that. Make them be present for class. What part of that is so hard? Parents, I'm really conf- I'm confuzzle here. Yes, I said confuzzle gasted. That's confused, puzzled and flabbergasted. If you don't know those words, go look in a dictionary. I, I'm, I'm that person that really, truly believes that we are at a we are at one of the worst. We want to we're at one of the lowest points in educational history. We had a lady. Betsy DeVos, who destroyed our education system for four years with the help of the orange. We had a a we had a pandemic that has destroyed the integrity of a good education that our instructors can deliver because the parents felt more entitled to tell us how to teach our classes. Did we not go to school to get these degrees? Did we not put in the experience at our institutions? Did we not study our content? Did we not study class management? I I just want, I just want to know what are their accolades versus ours? Don't worry. I'll wait. My point is if we're going to be taking bullets for parents, irresponsibility, then we need to be the ones to be able to make the decisions as to whether or not services can be provided or whatever excuse that higher ups would have us do or follow. We, we need to be the, the, the ruling party. Now I get it. It's not in our job description to make decisions at that kind of level. Neither is making sacrifices 
to be a scapegoat. Neither is it to be a person who has to take the blame for a student not doing their work or a parent not enforcing the student to do the work. Never have I been in such a situation to where I I never I never thought I would hear the day where I would say a black mother cannot do anything with her child. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like the fact that we are in the situation we're in. But one thing I can say, the ma- the black matriarch has never been a failure when it came to raising kids. It's it's this generation that the parents are beginning to fail. And I'm like, wait a minute. When did that be when did that become our problem? When? When did it become our problem that if a child doesn't log in to the class, no matter how we reach out to them or to the parent, that it still becomes our fault? When did that become our fault? We go the extra mile. We sacrifice so many different things. Like I know a teacher, he lost his entire, he lost his entire family because of education. I know a woman who basically lost a husband because she couldn't give him the time that he really wanted because she spent so many times, she spent so much time dedicated to her students. There's a friend of mine who is suffering COVID right now and is still teaching from home, dedicated to the job, gets no rest, went and bought stuff for their students. Like, and then you have me. I'm the person out here who's literally who's literally putting the mission first. There are a lot of things I could be doing. I could be just a basic teacher. Just teach, go home, do everything I can at work and whatever whatever is not done at work, I don't take it home with me. I could be that teacher. I could be that teacher with a little snark to it. <clears throat> but I dedicate my life to being able to make a difference with the children. Now, this isn't to say that I'm frustrated with the job, even though it is obvious. This isn't to say that I want to quit my job. That ain't me. I'm not going to quit my job. I love my job because it's what I'm called to do. But educators, teachers, counselors, we are standing in a We are standing in a place, we are in a generation where the parents have glorified buying PS5s for almost $500, but won't spend just under $200 to get a laptop for their child. We are standing at a precipice of a generation of parents who are willing to spend $300 on a pair of Jordans, some of which that are getting recycled every eight or 10 years when they won't buy good, reliable, stable internet. We are in a generation where parents believe the child. Well, I'm sorry. We are in a generation of parents that enables the child to be disrespectful to to the teachers and intentionally fail just enough so that they can get credit recovery or act up enough so that they can get a check. And we have to be the ones to make accommodations for it. Now you tell me, how fair is that? It ain't. We are not paid for the dedication that we give. So we need to leave some options. We need to have the options, but we need to leave them only one. Make teachers great again. 